was so scared. <laughs> so, this story takes place over one summer when I was 14 years old. It was around 11pm and I was in my bedroom on my computer. I had just gotten home. I was living with my brother at the time because my parents were in Florida for a while. So, me and my brother were the only ones home, and the only ones who had access to the house. I needed a photo of myself for something, I don't remember what, and I opened my camera roll to look through. This is the picture that I saw. Immediately my whole body froze and I couldn't move. I immediately closed the camera roll and sat on my bed for a while. I began shaking and tears of fright came to my eyes. I gained the courage to open the camera roll to look again. I stared at the photo for at least 10 minutes, feeling more uneasy every second. I checked the time the picture was taken, and that made me more distressed. The picture was taken at 9.45pm. What made it worse was that my brother and I both left the house at 8 to get dinner. No one was home at the time the picture was taken. Afraid to leave my room, I picked up my phone and messaged my brother. I told him that I was so scared I couldn't move, and if he could, come here. He asked me what was wrong, and I sent him the picture from my computer along with what happened. Him, thinking it was a joke, he laughed and told me good night. Me, not joking, I called him. He could obviously hear me crying and started questioning me. I told him to come to my room, and he did so. He entered my room with a golf club for protection. At this point, we were both shitting our pants, staring at the blurry picture of a man we didn't recognize. We decided to go check out the house to see if anyone was home, so we proceeded to swipe through all four floors of our house. We didn't see anything sketchy on the top three floors, so we walked down to the basement. We walked down the stairs, and my brother leaded the way. Shit, he whispered. I looked to the back corner of our basement where the cellar door that leads to the outside is. The door and the hatch thing that covers the steps to outside are both wide open. After this, we called the police and showed them the picture and told them the story. They told us to lock our doors and call them if we heard or saw anything. We locked the doors and both sat in my brother's room for the rest of the night. Whoever was in our house and on my computer must have opened the computer and opened the camera accidentally. He must have accidentally pressed spacebar while the camera was open in the background and snapped a picture of himself. I still wonder why someone would break into our house for nothing. Nothing was stolen. No drawers or cabinets were open. Nothing seemed out of place. My brother ended up moving out of the house a few days after, in fear the guy would come back. This was late 2009, and I was only 10 years old at the time. Me, my mother and stepdad lived in a small town in Sweden, in a big house. If you were upstairs, you could still hear talking down at the kitchen, so it wasn't that isolated. One evening, my mum and stepdad were going to my grandma's house, and I asked them if I could stay home alone, because as a typical 10 year old, I thought I was too grown up for a babysitter. After about an hour of nagging, she gave up and told me I could stay home alone, if I kept the door locked, and never opened to anyone. It was really exciting for me, and I stayed up really late watching cartoons. If I remember correctly, I was watching Spongebob in our living room, and eating ice cream. After about 5 minutes eating the delicious ice cream I was sure I heard a silent knock on the door. I didn't think much of it and continued watching the show. Another 5 minutes passed and I heard the knocking again but this time it was much louder. I was frozen in fear and waited for the knocking to stop. After about 30 seconds the knocking stopped and the only sound was the TV. I called my mum and she said that she will be home in about 20 minutes and she told me to go into my room and lock the door. I went into my room without turning the TV sound off, so it was pretty loud. I sat in my room and after about 2 minutes I heard somebody not knocking on the door, but banging really really loudly at the door. I was frozen in fear once again. After about 3 minutes I could hear the door lock turn and somebody walking in. The person was inside my house while I was home alone. I sat there in my room quiet, and then the TV turned off. The footsteps were louder, and it felt like he was coming towards my room. After a couple of seconds the steps stopped, 
and I could hear knocking on my bedroom door. And an old man said, Let me in. I have something for you. I started screaming and crying for my mother and the man started shaking the door handle. After two minutes I heard a car outside, so I looked out the window. It was my mum. I opened the window and screamed for help and said that there was a man in my house. My stepdad quickly ran to the shed to get his axe and run up the stairs. The man quickly ran out of the back door and my stepdad ran after him into the streets. My mum called the police and my stepdad calmed me down when he got in there. This is an experience that I will never forget. This happened when I was about ten and a half years old. It had been raining all of that day and evening, and I went to bed at 9pm, which was my normal bedtime on a school night, and I fell asleep almost immediately. I woke up in the middle of the night, which was really weird. I mean, it probably happened twice a year. I was the type of kid to sleep through anything. My dad always said that I slept so heavy, one day a tornado would carry me away in my sleep. The clock on my nightstand said that it was 3am and the house was completely silent. I realised that I was very thirsty and got up to get a drink from the kitchen sink. Our kitchen sink was a pretty typical setup. Long counter with two sinks in the middle, some counter space on one side and a cute little window over the sinks. It was very dark in the house but I knew my way around and I wasn't afraid of the dark so I didn't bother to turn a light on. I had my drink of water and then decided that I was kind of hungry. I grabbed sandwich fixings out of the fridge and a couple of slices of bread and set them on the counter. I started making my sandwich, feeling my stomach grumble. I reached up and pulled the corn for the overhead light so I could see how much mustard I was putting on my sandwich. Flick, squirted the mustard on my sandwich, good to go. I gathered up all the sandwich stuff and reached up to turn the light off. This time, my eyes caught the window and I couldn't help but scream. <coughs> Ham, cheese and mustard dropping to the floor. I backed across the room and continued to scream. There was a face in the window. Not just a regular face. It had to be the creepiest, crazy-eyed, dirty, methed out face I'd ever seen. I wanted to run for my parents, but I was afraid to take my eyes off of the face, so I just kept screaming. Eventually, my parents came to see what the racket was. My father grabbed a golf club and chased a man out of our yard. We had no idea who the guy was. He wasn't anyone that we had seen around town, and it didn't seem like he was trying to break in or steal anything. When I got older, I decided that he must have just been a creep who happened to be passing by and saw me through the window or something. Whoever he was, he scared the shit out of a little girl who just wanted a sandwich. I am a female. I was 15 and it was 1992. I lived in a Southern California suburb where everyone's backyard is fully fenced in. We had a detached garage that could only be accessed from the alley or backyard. We also had an old woodshed that led to a gate going out to the alley. It was evening but still light out. The sun was getting ready to set. My parents were on the verge of divorce, so my mum wasn't home, which was common most evenings. My dad works nights, so he had an odd sleeping pattern. He also slept like a rock. When he was sleeping, it was often like being alone because it was difficult to wake him up. He was sleeping on the sofa just inside the back door. I went up to our garage to switch some of my laundry. And just over the dryer, there was a window facing the woodshed where our gate was. I knelt down to pull some clothes out of the dryer. And when I stood up... There was a man looking in at me. He was in our backyard. The gate behind him was closed. It was a really loud gate so when someone opened or closed it, you definitely heard it from even inside the house. I hadn't heard it so it was clear he had been there while I walked out and had watched me. He didn't say anything I can recall. He just started to walk toward the door to get into the garage. I remember just thinking, I need to get out of this garage because otherwise he will come in and I'll be trapped in here. This was because the garage door opener was right next to the door you had to walk through to get in from the backyard, the door that I came through. I ran out into the backyard where he was. I had no choice. The back door to our house consisted of French doors and the one door was open because I often left it open when I was just running out to grab laundry. I thought about running into the house because he wasn't very far away from me and I was afraid he would run in behind me before I could run in and get the door locked. He was probably in his late thirties, maybe around five foot nine, and had longer hair. 
He started to just walk towards me without saying anything. I froze. I thought perhaps I could run past him around the side of our house and jump the four-foot fence and run and start screaming. We had an active neighborhood and I knew most of our neighbors. I was certain if I did that someone would help. However, I couldn't manage to get up the courage to just move because I would have to run past him and I was scared I would run right into his grip. Just then, our dog came bolting out and began barking ferociously and he backed up a bit. She was followed by my dad who's six foot three and a pretty big guy. He yelled out, Hey, who the fuck are you? Then he looked at me and said, What the fuck are you doing just standing there without a goddamn weapon? The guy got very flustered and backed up. My dad looked back at him and said, What are you doing here? The guy started to say there were some trash cans knocked over in the alley and he wasn't sure who they belonged to. My dad told him to show him and they went into the alley. My dad came back a few minutes later and said there were no garbage cans knocked over and that the guy's car was parked a few houses down in the alley. My dad didn't call the cops. In a few choice words, he told him to get out of the area and don't come back. It just wasn't really in him to call the cops because he was a gun owner and came from a bad upbringing and had a mentality of handling things on his own. I feel guilty that we didn't call the cops because that person most likely did find a victim. My dad then proceeded to bring me into the garage and point out the axe and crowbar hanging right next to the door that I used to come out of the garage. Then he yelled at me for several minutes for not grabbing one on my way out. I grew up in a suburb of LA County in Southern California. It had a very small Midwestern town type of feel, nothing like you get near the city of LA. I'm a female and I was about 9 years old at the time, it was the mid 80s. My parents had bought a house a couple years prior that was built in the 1930s. There was a playhouse in the backyard that resembled the main house. It was probably a little over 5 feet high when you walked in. It was just a room built with the same materials as a house. It had a roof, walls, plaster, carpet, windows, door, etc. The original owners obviously had it built for children. My best friend lived next door and she was a couple years older than me. Well, we had talked about spending the night in this playhouse for about a year and we finally got up the nerve to do it. My dad set everything up for us. To give you an idea of what the yard was like, there were two large orange trees that had dropped several leaves around the yard. The yard was fenced in. There was a detached garage that led to the back alley and a woodshed next to the playhouse that had a gate that also led out to the alley. Around the side of the house, there was a shorter gate about three feet high that led to the front yard. Everything was very old. We never really closed the door leading from the yard into the garage all the way because it was old and swollen and you had to slam it shut or open if you latched it. We would just close it enough where it would stick a little but we never pulled it shut all the way. The small gate on the side of the house that led to the front yard was also hard to open or close. You had to lift it up to really get it to move because it stuck on the ground. So, night time rolls around and we're set up with our sleeping bags, having a great time playing mad libs and listening to the radio. All the while, we stopped several times thinking we were hearing someone walk around. A couple times I called out for my dad because he sounded like the footsteps of a heavier person. No one had answered and it wasn't uncommon for us to get spooked because we were both nuts for horror films. Usually, I would open the door and look outside but something just creeps me out enough where I didn't want to do that. We tried looking out the windows, but we had the light on so we couldn't see out very well. Being as young as we were, we didn't think to turn off the light so we could see out better without being seen. We sort of just brushed it off like we were probably scaring ourselves like we usually did. We finally decided to turn off the radio and the light and just lay there and get ready to go to sleep. Shortly after we did, we both sort of bolted out in our sleeping bags and started to say to each other, Okay, someone is really out there. We honestly just sat there, grabbing onto each other listening. We had a small terrier, but we ruled out that it was her really quickly. First, you could hear it even from my friend's house next door every time the dog came in and out the dog door. It was metal and would swing several times, and we hadn't heard the dog come out. Second, the footsteps we heard and the leaves were not from a dog. They were not from a child either. They were from someone older. We kept hearing it and they would get closer to the playhouse, stop, and then start again and get further away. This went on for what felt like 20 minutes 
but it was probably closer to five, when finally it sounds like all hell breaks loose. We hear the dog come out the dog door and begin barking as if she's snapping right at someone's heels. Then we hear the side gate leading to the front yard, the one you have to pick up or it drags along the ground. Open. We hear it drag on the ground. We immediately dart out the door of the playhouse and see that the gate is open, and see the dog running out. The dog couldn't have opened the gate regardless. However, even if she could, a dog would push a gate open. The gate had been pulled open toward the backyard. We just started running out towards the front yard, my friend in front of me. The dog was way ahead of us at this point and we couldn't see her anymore. What I noticed as I was running out was that I could see the door leading from the backyard into the garage and it was open. Not wide open, but about 4-5 to five inches open. When I got about to where the side gate was, I heard the garage door slam. We kept running and saw the dog coming back towards the front yard. My friend grabbed her and we started ringing the front doorbell. In all this commotion, my friend and I had both commented that it could have been our parents playing a joke on us, trying to scare us. That was clearly not the case. My mum came to the door half asleep and very confused about why we were out front with the dog. My dad was sleeping upstairs. We woke up my dad to check things out, and when we all went back into the yard, the garage door was indeed slammed shut. There were two people out in the yard with us. One clearly ran out the side gate when the dog came out, and the other one was most likely hidden in the garage and watched us run off. We figured they probably exited the garage, slamming the door shut, and then went out the other gate or jumped the fence heading out to the alley. My parents were a bit sceptical of this story. I honestly think that for a few minutes they thought we were goofing around. Again, we were big time horror fans and loved being scared, often scaring each other. Then, my mum swore it was probably my friend's younger brother trying to scare us. They didn't call the police. The next day though, my mum called my friend's mum. They were both friends, and her mum was a bit creeped out because she said her son was home with her. He was only 10 at the time, and that he wasn't part of any prank on us. And we talk about it to this day with our parents. They now feel that they should have called the police. And by hindsight, it's 2020, I guess. I was 11 years old. I shared a room with my sister who was 9 at the time. One night I slept in my bed and I was awakened by a bright light shining in my face. I was shocked and at first I only saw the light. As my eyes focused, I realized that the light was a flashlight. I then saw the face of a man. I will never forget his face looking down at me. He was an African American man and he had a maniacal smile on his face, revealing one gold tooth. I was terrified but managed to shriek out, there is somebody in the house. I had hoped my parents would hear me. The man turned and ran up my screen for help. He made it to the living room when I heard my father's voice call out. There's nobody in the house. Go back to sleep. The intruder stopped in his tracks. His back was turned to me. And he stood there for what seemed longer but was probably only a couple of seconds. I was hoping to see him keep going. But instead, he slowly turned to face me. With that same sadistic smile, he started to come towards me again. I panicked and screamed, he's coming back. At this point my mother got my father to get out of bed. The man heard him and turned to run out of the front door. I was afraid my father would not believe me. But to my relief, there were mud trucks all over the carpet and kitchen floor. It was about 3am. My father called the police and they knew of this individual. The police were there until about 5am. I did not go back to sleep that night, but I did manage to go to school the next day. My sister never woke up and slept through the entire thing. I never found out whether they caught the guy or not, but I still remember his smile with one gold tooth. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader. So, thank you very much for listening to this video. If you enjoyed, why not check out my other videos by clicking on the links on the screen. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks a lot for listening.